Hi guys, welcome back to another video. This is Code Forces round 895 Div 3, and we're gonna solve the fifth problem data structure span. So, let's quickly see what the problem states. So, you'll be given an array of integers like a, let's call it as a. We'll take this example only that is 1, 2, 3, and 6. And they will also give you a binary string. A binary string is that is, binary string means it can be a mix of zeros and ones okay so we'll take one zero zero one with these both consist n characters how many characters are here n is equal to four they, they in input they will give all of this now Augustine is a big fan of data structures so this guy is uh, Augustine and uh, he is like a big fan of data structures okay he is a big fan of data structures therefore he asked you to implement a data structure that can answer Q queries so he will give you q queries here so this is q what are the queries the queries are of two types query is of type 1 and query is of type 2 if the query is of type 1 he will give you two integers l and r l and r represents the range of a and s so for simplicity instead of using zero indexing let's use one based indexing so the index will be what one two three four now what did they say if it is LR, replace each character of SI, okay, with its opposite. If this is S, you need to replace 0 with 1 and 1 with 0. And if uh, the type is of query is of type 2, they will give you G. So this can have LR, this can have 0 or 1 here. Calculate the value of bitwise XOR of the AI for all indices i such that SA equal to G. Note that the XOR of an empty set of the numbers is considered to be 0. So let's understand what is 0 represent. So if they give you a query of type 2 and they give you 0, you need to find the XOR of the corresponding A values that are having uh, the corresponding index of S that is having 0 in A. So here zeros are there in index 2 and index 3 in S. So what are the corresponding values of A? 2 and 3, right? So if they give you 2, 0 means we need to tell that we need to report the answer as 2 XOR 3. And if they give you 2, 1 means what are the corresponding values? This one and this one, right? So for 1 and 4, this is 1 and this is 1. 1 XOR 6. So if it is 2, 1, we should do 1 XOR 6. So I hope this is clear. Now let's try to understand the example that they have provided in the question. And then let's try to figure out the answer. Now, so uh, in the example they told, consider the following series. They are giving you 2, 0. So if it is 2, 0, we should take 2 XOR 3, right? These are the zeros. So they told uh, 2 XOR 3. This is the symbol for XOR. Again, what in case if you don't know what an XOR means is, if it is 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 and 0, 0, if there are, these are the two binary numbers. If two numbers are different, we say that the XOR is 1. If two numbers are same, we say that the XOR is 0. This is applicable to anything. So if you take 2 XOR 2, in C++ uh, you use the caret symbol here. In normal text terms, you use this symbol for XOR. It is 0 and 100 XOR 100, it's also 0. And uh, what is 0 XOR 100? If two numbers are different, in binary terms, you write it 100, right? So in binary terms, if you write it 100, all the numbers will be different here. So you write 100. 0 XOR 100 is 100. So that's the specialty of it. Uh, if the numbers are same, it is 0. If the numbers are different, in the binary terms, we just replace that number. So 0 XOR, everything will be 0. Here, the corresponding values will be this. So you write 1, 0, 0. Now, uh, one, uh, so for the query of type 1, they gave you 1, 3. If it is 1, 3, what is it? I need to replace all the indices here. So 1 becomes 0, 0 becomes 1, and this becomes 1. Now, if the query of type 2, they are asking for 1, what is the XOR? So for 1, we should take 2, 3, and 6 because the corresponding values are 1, right? So that's what they took as 2, 3, and 6. Now, similarly for everything, let's not consider that. Now, uh, in the question, if you see, uh, if you know like a little bit of uh, any data structure, like they will tell you that uh, if it is like a range query, we use uh, segment trees or square root decomposition. If you see the editorial, the problem setters or some, the editorialist have told that for a div3 problem, the square root decomposition or segment tree might be overwhelming or it might be a lot for them. So we are not going to use these uh, things. It might be much more simpler because it's div3. So that's the thing. So how do we do it? Now, uh, 
what is the what are some of the things that we already know about uh, ranges right if it is range if we want to get it optimally what is something that we already know that is prefix sum if you don't know uh, just a small recap of it if we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 what is prefix sum i have this is prefix sum means i have one in second index i have 1 plus 2 this is 1 plus 2 plus 3 similarly i will go till 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 okay now uh i am telling that if i want to know the sum of 4 5 6 i don't have to calculate uh, if i want to know the sum of index from 4 to 6 i don't want to calculate 4 plus 5 plus 6 if it is like 1000 or something it takes more time right so what do i do i go to the prefix index take the last element 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 minus you take this element the just l minus 1 value that is 1 plus 2 plus 3 so then you subtract it 1 plus 2 plus 3 if you subtract it you are easily getting what 4 5 6 value simple right now if it applies for any range here so suppose i want to know uh, the sum of 4 and 5 only i don't want 6 for 4 and 5 we already know that till 5 i know the sum of 1 plus 2 till 5 and if i want to subtract here 1 plus 2 plus 3 i'll subtract so this gets cancelled i get only 4 and 5 sum so if it is like an array if we want to know the range what is happening within a range in case of prefix sum we will do we'll take the in a prefix sum and know what is the sum in the given range whatever be the range they are giving in big of one complexity you will be able to get it you will compute in big of n so this is something that we already know but how do we apply it here whatever we know we know xor of the same values is this we know the prefix sum now we have to connect the dots now before going on to it let's uh, try to solve for a simple problem that is let's see what is l equal to equal to r what happens if it is l equal to equal to r now let's say if it is for example 1 2 3 4 and numbers are like 1 0 1 0 uh, okay so this is a and this is s this is the binary string let's say l equal to equal to r i am taking it as 2 index 2 again one based indexing uh, so according to whatever we know we'll just take that we'll take the xor of all of this xor will be some uh, some value okay some value here let's say xor is y now uh, i am telling that you if uh, for the query of type 1 if l is same as r i need to change 0 to 1 right okay i need to change 0 to 1 everything is changed fine nothing is going to happen now tomorrow a uh, query of type 2 comes and he asks that what is the uh, xor for all elements that are having binary string as one so what will i do i'll take this one i'll take this one and i'll take this one so earlier what happened earlier if this operation was not there it was zero so if 2 1 comes it will be just this and this now if it is 2 1 here before l equal to r it is just this and this but after l equal to r 2 1 is one got added here similarly for zero also so we need to keep track of zeros and ones here so we know that for ones it is a separate logic for two uh, zeros are also it's a separate logic for two zero we want only zeros for ones also we want only zeros so let's think in this way let's take xor of zeros in one array and xor of one in another array so initially xor of zero is what two and four right two xor four is there xor of one is what one xor three is there so i guess you are with me right so for initially all the zeros will be going to one this and all the ones will be going so now if i ask you hey uh, i have a query of type 2 and i want to know what are the xor of all the zeros if all the zeros i can immediately refer here xor of 0 will give you 2 for simple query of type 2 and if it is 1 you can simply refer here 1 3 already pre computed but what happens what happens if the number is same and we are going to change in that case can we try to we have to remove this 2 from here right if 0 is here 2 is here i need to change the value so i need to cancel this 2 from this array i need to cancel this 2 since 0 is going out and i am converting it to 1 since i am converting it to 1 i need to xor it with 2 again so next time if 2 once ha happens it will be 1 2 3 right it will be 1 3 2 okay the numbers are same but what the, how do we actually do that this is for one solution only so as i told earlier the same xor value if we take it is zero right so what you have to do we already know that we already know that uh, the xor we, uh, so what is it 
here it was 0 if you want to cancel a number you simply XOR it with 2 if you want to cancel 0 here you simply XOR it with 2 this 2 and this 2 gets cancelled cancelled in the sense it is converting to 0 and 4 XOR 0 is what it is 4 only right 100 XOR 0 it is 4 only now if I want to add this element what I am doing I am simply XORing it with 2 so for L equal to equal to R, we just solved the problem. We just understood that there are two types of queries. We are storing XOR of 0, we are storing XOR of 1. And for L equal to equal to R, if we want to remove an element, I'm just XORing that number there. And for 1, I'm XORing this number there. Now let's try to solve it for a range. How do we do that? So you understood, I hope you understood this. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is 1, 0, uh, 1, 0. Now, suppose, uh, let's write it XOR of 0 here. XOR, this is an array. XOR of 0 contains 2, XOR 4. And XOR of uh, 1 contains how much? 1, XOR 3. Now, I am having a query. Uh, let's, uh, I want to get uh, what happens within a range, right? What happens within a range? This I don't know. So, we know that in prefix sum, we will be able to get the range. So, we will calculate till here and we will subtract it from this one. So is it possible to do something like this? Let's try to understand. So this is 1, this is 1 XOR 2, this is 1 XOR 2 XOR 3, and this is 1 XOR 2 XOR 3 XOR 4. Now, if I want to know what is the XOR values of 2 and 3, what will I do? I want to take 1 XOR 2 XOR 3 and simply XOR it with the leftmost side. That is, if I XOR with the leftmost values, 1 1 gets cancelled, I get 2 XOR 3, right? I get 2 XOR 3. So if you let's, uh, take a better example here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and it is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. I take that this is 1, 1 XOR 2, 1 XOR 2, XOR 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. These are all XORs. I hope you are getting the logic. And 1 XOR 2, XOR 3, XOR 4, XOR 5, XOR 6. Now, if I want to know only 3, 4, 5 XOR, if I want to know, let's understand first this one. 1 XOR uh, 2 3 4 5 if I want to know only this what will I do I'll take whatever be the pre-computed value of this minus I need to subtract it what can I subtract this is 1 XOR 2 1 XOR 2 if I XOR both of them since these are same it gets cancelled these are same it gets cancelled I got 3 XOR 4 XOR 5 okay who can give you range the query of type 1 suppose I'm asking that L equal to 3 and R equal to 5 these are all index okay these are values index i did the same here but let's say this is 3 4 5 are the indexes now if i want to update the values what will i do x of 0 is initially what x of 0 is 2 xor 4 xor 6 right x of 1 is what initially before handling it is 1 xor 3 xor 5 now if i give you 3 5 uh, through pre computation I got that I sub I XOR 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 5 with 1 2 I got 3 4 5 6 XOR what will I do I will simply XOR this with both the sides because 1 becomes 0 here 0 becomes 1 and here 1 becomes 0 so again I do XOR of 3 4 5 now what happens 5 5 gets cancelled 3 3 gets cancelled new values are 1 XOR 4 for X of 1 and X of 0 is what 4 gets cancelled, it will be 1, 6, 1, XOR, 6, XOR, 3, XOR, 5. Now, after we convert it, this is 0 and this is 1 and this is 0, right? After conversion. So, what happens? 2, 3, 5, 6 are the new values. Oh, sorry, this is not, this is 2 here, right? So, 2, 3, 6, 5 are the z values of 0. What is for 1? For 1, it is 1 here and 4 got converted to 1. So, this is 4. 1 x or 4 we got it so whoever be the range we take the range and simply update it to x of 0 and x of 1 now tomorrow if uh, 2 comes the next query is 2 and he asks of 0 simply refer it here and simply 1 you refer it here so again how did we derive the solution we i said that i am a div 3 participant i don't know segment trees or square root decomposition i never heard of it but one thing i know is uh, i know to find a sum within a range through prefix sum so from prefix sum we know how to find the range of numbers i don't know what to do with it so i just wrote what are all the xors that are available so i understood that if the same number xor comes it is zero and zero xor something is that number and uh, different numbers it's one like i like that i told now 
I thought of writing, will I solved for one solution that is if L equal to equal to R, what happens? Uh, I just observed that we need to keep track of two indices because for query of type two, I need one or I need to get type zero. So I have a separate mapping for X of one and X of zero. So whoever for L equal to equal to R, for whoever is going for zero to one, who is transferring from zero to one, I need to cancel that number. In order to cancel that number, I simply say that I need to XOR with both. If it is not there, I just XOR it. So it comes there. If it is already there, I need to uh, reverse it. So uh, two comes here. And how did we go for the range? Range is simple. Like uh, you get the XOR values, you get the XORs in that range. Same that XOR value, you update it to the X of zero and X of one. So whoever is already part of zero will automatically get cancelled. Whoever is not there, we know that the zero becomes one or one becomes zero. If it is not part of that, it automatically gets added. Here four got added, right? So uh, here four got cancelled. So same thing. So if it is not there, if you XOR, irrespective of whatever be the value, if it is value, simply XOR the value here. So automatically these things are taken place, these numbers. Now let's understand that with the help of a code. So what did we do here? X of two represents, this is the number of uh, the value of XOR in zero's place and this is the value of XOR in one's place. For simplicity, we are using one based indexing. So we are getting the values. This is one, two, three, four, five, right? The top values, I'm getting the prefix XOR, one XOR, two, three, one, two, to one XOR, two XOR, three. And here again, I am binary string is one zero, one zero means I'm simply adding a dollar because I need to make this as one indexing. This is at index zero. Now, if the XOR is zero, I'm telling that if the XOR of zero, I'm tracking, suppose this is one zero, one zero, one means I'm taking the two values of here and five values. I'm just XORing the V of I here. For X of one also, initially, what are be the values I'm XORing and I'm getting the queries. If it is of queries of type one, I have to take the range. If it is the range, if one, two, three, four, five is the range means, if I want three and four means, what will I do? I'll take the XOR till three and two, which I already computed in the prefix, as you already know. So I get the prefix value of both of this. Then I'll simply uh, pull this here and XOR three, four, and pull this here and XOR uh, three, four to X one. So if it is not there, it gets added. If, if three is not there, it gets added and four gets canceled. If it is three uh, is already there, uh, if three is a new participant, it goes there. So three XOR four will be a different value, but because of doing the magic of XOR, these values are getting navigated. Now uh, we'll take if type is of one, now else the type will be definitely be two. So we'll take the value and whatever, if they're asking zero means directly you print zero and directly you print one. Now uh, this is the submission here. So if you want, you can refer. And uh, as you know, as you knew, uh, it might be sometimes hard, right? Like how do I go ahead and think like this? So we also don't know, right? We just thought, okay, prefix sum. If it is not there, we learned a prefix sum here. We learned XOR, same value will be zero. We understood that if uh, a set of numbers, if you XOR it, if it is not there, it gets canceled. So these are things that we learned. We generally connected the patterns. We solved for small problem and got it. So uh, next problem, like at least one or two applications from here, we'll take it forward. So that's it, guys. Uh, please let me know in the comments, like how do, what do you feel about the video? And until then, see you. Thank you so much.